If you look at the opening, it says Janilin has a rectangular rug with an area of 21 square feet. The rug is four feet longer than its width or, four, or than it is wide. Write an equation that can be used to determine the length and the width of the rug. So do we know how wide it is? Does it tell us how wide it is? Not in the no. problem, right? So if we don't know something, what do we use? X. So if the width is X, then the length has to be X plus what? Okay, so draw a rectangle, put X, because we don't know the width, and then put X plus four. Okay, <clears throat> do we know what the area is? We know that the area is 21, right? Okay, so start off, you drew a picture, right? And then do length times width, and it's supposed to equal what? 21, good. What's the length? So you just copy what you put down for length. So length is X plus four. What's the width? Just X, right? And that all equals 21. Okay, so what is the next step? Yeah, so we're gonna multiply it. So X squared plus four X equals 21. Cause we want something that we can put in our graphing calculator. Right? Can we put something that equals 21 in our graphing calculators? It has to equal what? Zero. How do I make this equal zero? Yeah, subtract it from this side and put it over here. So then it's going to turn into a negative. So at this point, it equals zero, and I can put this into what? You can put it into the Desmos calculator. When you put it in the Desmos calculator, where does it cross the X axis? At negative seven and X equals three. Which value am I gonna use? The positive one because lengths and area are not negative. So what do I do with that three? I plug it in for X, where? Good. So I'm taking three and I'm plugging it in up here and right here. So instead of an X, I'm gonna have a three. So now the width is gonna be three and the length is gonna be what? Seven. And then you check it by doing three times seven, which is 21. Is that correct? Yes. So anytime you have an area problem where it says anything about a rectangular shape or a rug, and they give you the square feet, the square feet is area. And if you're trying to find one of the sides, you use X, right? What if it were to say the rug is four feet less than something? Then you would have done X minus four, right? You don't, but we're studying quadratics, so they have to learn how to do the area models of it. Okay, today we're going to talk about um, the projectile motion of quadratics, and then we're going to talk about 
the projectile equation. So do you remember we did all these examples where we were talking about throwing things and we were talking about like throwing a football or something like that. So anytime you like throw something like up in the air, what kind of shape did that make? An arch, AKA a starts with a P. Parabola. Parabola. The shape of a, a quadratic equation is a parabola. Mm -hmm. So it's a parabola. So anytime you throw something up in the air, it makes the shape of a parabola. If it has gravity, if I threw something up in the air and there was zero gravity, it would just keep on going straight, straight, straight up in the air. Okay. Thank you. So <clears throat> so that's something that I want you guys to keep in mind that if you throw it straight in the air and that there's no gravity that it is going to go straight up in the air and it's going to keep on going going is it ever going to hit the ground no are you sure Yeah, if there's no gravity, you can't pull it down. So that would change your equation because everything that you throw up in the air that makes that U shape is gonna be a quadratic equation. Do you guys understand that? Anything you throw, any problems that you do where you're, you're throwing something or it's being projected, it's always gonna be a quadratic equation. Quadratic, yeah. So it's gonna be something squared. So what I just did when I threw the marker up in the air and it hit the top of the ceiling and came down and made a U shape. So I could make an equation out of that if I knew what, how many feet it started at and then the velocity of it. Does anybody know what velocity is? Is another, good. Velocity is the same thing as speed. And then, um, I would also need to know if there was gravity or no gravity. Does that make sense? Okay, so if there is gravity, then the beginning of your quadratic equation is going to always be negative 16 x squared. So you guys need to know that and remember that. So on the back of your note sheet, I want you guys to copy down this table. Okay, this is also talking about the cannonball being shot up, but it is a different problem than what is on your notes. So I just want you to copy down the table real quick. Just the table. It's supposed to be a table. X is what? What does the X represent? T, but it, X always represents time, right? Okay, X always represents time. So you're just copying down the table. So this is your X, this is your Y. Now, I'm not going to go straight into showing you what it means to be quadratic and with shooting a cannon off. I'm going to show you from a more like logical point, like just adding and subtracting. Okay, so this says a cannon is 10 feet off the ground. Where in your table do you see the 10 feet? 
the distance, right? So this is something that's being launched. So we know we're gonna use a x squared plus b x plus c. Do you guys remember C is always the starting point? Do you remember that? Or the Y intercept? Okay, so this says it launches the cannonball straight up with a velocity of 406 feet per second. Imagine that there's no gravity. So we're imagining that there's no gravity, right? So if there's no gravity, is it gonna create a U shape or is it gonna go straight? straight because it's not going to come back down, right? So if something goes straight, it's not going to be this U shape like this or like this. If something is straight and there's no gravity, it's going to be an equation like this, a linear equation because it's straight, right? Okay, so I'm going to use what I know up here, the velocity is 406. So Where would I put 406? So if I start at 10, it's 10 feet above, right? So velocity is 406 feet per second. So after one second, where is it? After one second, if the speed is 406, right? After one second, What's its distance? Hmm? We start, but we didn't start from, we start from 10, right? See how you started 10 feet above? Okay. So I take 406 and I do what? Okay, so 10. So I'm at 10. So it goes 416. After two seconds, how would I get that? What would I have to, what would I have to add? I would add how much? No. I would add 406 to this. Uh-huh, 822. After three seconds, you would add 406 again. That would be what? 1,228. After four seconds, what would that be? And I'd add another, I would take this number and add 406. It would be what? Six hundred and thirty-four, and then after five seconds, it would be where? Two thousand forty. Good. So that does that make sense? Because you're starting at ten feet, and if every second you're going up four hundred and six, you just add four hundred and six to each of these, right? Okay, so the next one says write an equation to model the distance in feet D of the ball T seconds after it was fired from the cannon if there was no gravity. So there's no gravity, so I'm not going to use a quadratic equation. I'm going to use this, right? So my equation is going to be a linear equation. And I'm going to plug in what, just two numbers like that, right? So distance in feet, so D equals, what was the rate of the speed? 406 T. And then I put my starting point right here. What is my starting point? 10. You see how I wrote that equation? And it's a straight line because there's no what? There's no gravity. You guys good with that? Okay, I want you to look at your sheets. 
that I gave you. It says day nine. And this is creating a two variable quadratic function that models a relationship. So we're basically making a, an equation, right? Okay, so if I throw something again, I'm running out of things to throw. If I throw something again, is it going to be a linear equation or a quadratic? Quadratic. quadratic. What is the beginning of, like, let's say, where's my, how many feet off the ground is my arm? Probably four, right? So I'm coming from four feet, right? I'm gonna throw it. Tell me, tell me what you think the velocity is or the speed. Four feet, that sounds good. So four feet, I just threw the marker, right? I started at four feet. And then what did you count to? And then, so it would be like four feet per second. And then, so my equation, if we made an equation for what I just did, it would be negative 16 T squared because that represents gravity, right? And then the velocity was what? So it'd be, 4t, and then what would I put at the end? Where did I start from? My arm is, was four feet off the ground, so it's four. And you can do that with anything, as long as you know the velocity and how many feet it starts at or from, yeah. So this is another problem about a cannonball. And this represents the height, and then T represents the seconds. So they wanna know what does 50 mean? What does 312 T mean? And what does negative 16 T tell you? What does 50 mean? So write that down, height you start from. What does the 312 T mean? Velocity. Velocity. What does the negative 16 T squared mean? This means gravity, right? And it's negative because when it's thrown, it looks like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to plug this into Desmos so we can answer questions about it. So anytime they ask you questions about this, you're going to plug it into Desmos. And then you're going to sketch a graph. So go ahead and plug it into Desmos first. Your graph is, and it doesn't have to be perfect but your graph is gonna look something like this. It looks super skinny when you plug it into Desmos, right? Mm -hmm. And you can put it in backwards or frontwards, whichever. Like if you wanna put the 50 first or you wanna put the squared first. So the green is the, like the green right here is the parabola. Okay, so I just sketched it out. I just want you guys to sketch it out just like that. But keep it in your graphing calculator because we're gonna answer some questions about it.
All right, so what do you notice? It says, describe the shape of the graph. What does it tell us about the movement of the cannonball? What does it mean whenever it goes like, it's super skinny and goes up? Like almost like a straight line. What does that mean? What do you think it means? We're describing the velocity. So if it goes straight up, is it going fast? Yeah. Yes. How fast is it going? We already know, right? How fast is it? It's 312, is it feet? Yeah, per second. So you guys go with that? Yep. Okay, when I plug this into my calculator, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So I plug this in, it looks like a straight line, right? So, see how skinny it is? Okay, so I'm gonna answer some questions about it. The first question, it was like, what, it asked us what is going on, like describe the graph. Yeah, so what shape is it? It's a parabola, because it goes up, it's a really skinny parabola, right? So it's skinny. And it tells it, like that tells us it's moving fast. The rate is fast. It says, what is the maximum height the ball reaches? And when does that happen? If they ask you the maximum height, that's the vertex. Remember the vertex is a coordinate. It's the highest point, right? The X represents time. The Y represents the height. So time is when that when it happened, and then the height is the Y. So what you would do is you would look back at your graphing calculator. And where am I going to look? I'm going to scroll all the way up and look where? It looks like a straight line right there, right? Oops. Yeah, so my vertex is right there, right? That's the highest point. So copy those coordinates down because that's important. That's the, that's the maximum height, and then it tells you the time. The time is. nine seconds and 79.75 seconds sorry so that is point nine nine point seven five and then one thousand five hundred and seventy one feet so it was at its max height when The max height is 1,571. What is 9.75? The time, how many seconds it took, right? So just remember that that's where you look. And then, let's see if I can move my mouse. Like this. When does the ball hit the ground? And what is the domain? When does the cannonball hit the ground? What am I looking for? Zero, good. So you're looking for a zero. When does it hit the ground? So I'm looking for when it hits the ground, right? Yeah. What point is that? Yeah, 19, so what does that mean? 
Say it again. It hit the ground. Ground at 19.65 seconds. Why does this graph go all the way like down here? So if this is the ground, right? Why is there lines down here? No, it's not incorrect. You just disregard that because when I threw that marker up and it hit the ceiling and then it hit the floor, right? Did it go downstairs? No. Did it go through the floor? No. No, so you just don't, you disregard that. So it says, what? Are, what is the domain? The domain of this, we started at zero, right? So that's all, the domain is all the X values that it could be. So it can be zero to, when does it end? 19.65. It's not gonna be all real numbers anymore because if I said all real numbers, it would be in the basement or the second floor. So I would write it out like this because the arrows are pointing in that direction. And it's between X is going to be greater than zero, but then X is less than, that just means that's all of my X values. What are, where are all of my X values? They're between this point and this point on the X. Okay, so what you're looking for when you look at these velocity problems is you're looking for where they start on the Y, you're looking for the maximum height because the maximum point tells you the time and the max height. And then you're looking for the X intercept where it crosses X because that's where it landed, right? The time at which it landed. So good, you guys are doing good with this. <laughs> 